We're gonna need a bigger truck. Fate of the Furious. I mean, this is nuts. These movies just get better and better as each comes along. I'm Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. So going into this Fate of the Furious movie, I wanted to go in with my expectations low, even though I did love the film franchise. Before part eight came out, before my favorite one was part six. I do own that Fast and the Furious. I was really entertained with the last scene at the end where they're on the runway with all the cars going and the giant plane. I really loved it a lot. I thought Luke Evans did a great job as the villain. But when part seven came out, I was not liking that film at all. That was pretty disappointing and a lot of things didn't make sense. Granted, it was because of the untimely death of Mr. Paul Walker and rest in peace, sir. But there were still some things in that movie that I just could not give a pass to. Example, when The Rock's character and Jason Statham's character were in cars driving full ahead of speed to each other and crashed, and then they get out with no cuts or bruises as if nothing happened, things like that I just can't get on board. So going into Fate of the Furious Part 8, I wanted to keep my expectations low. But then, if Gary Gray is directing this movie, and he's directed so many great films over the last 20 years or more, like Friday, Set It Off, uh, the Negotiator, and that's actually one of my most favorite Samuel L. Jackson movies. He also did The Italian Job, A Man Apart, Law Abiding Citizen, 2015, Straight Outta Compton, and you know I love that movie, and now Fate of the Furious. And what's really great about these Fast and Furious movies now is they know that it's ridiculous, and they don't care, and they are self-aware, and everybody knows it, and it's just accepted. And they're just straight up honest about the whole thing, and the trailer's like, look, we're adding more cars, we're adding more guns, we're adding more explosions. It's kind of like a Michael Bay movie times 10 in ways, and you know, hey, why not? But seeing all eight films, or seeing the first seven films, you kind of ask yourself, okay, when they have part eight, what else can they do that we've never seen before? Well, I'll tell you what that is, and they can add a submarine with heat-seeking missiles. And yes, is it over the top and ridiculously stupid? Yes, it is, but you just don't care, and you're there to have fun, and you will have a great time, whether you're trying to or not. Now, as far as the story, the Fast and Furious movies are always strong about family. I mean, it's just a tight-knit family, five fingers of death coming together to make that strong fist and Dom's family they are tight and they're not going to be broken up but when you're watching the trailers you see it looks like Dom has gone over to the dark side you're like okay what the hell is going on here when I first saw the trailers I thought Dom was like maybe hypnotized or something like that or had a chip in his head you know I did not know why he was going to be turning on his friends on his family and I will say I'm not going to spoil it here of course but the the plot of the movie the story the script gave a great valid reason and made it very believable of why he would do this another great thing about it is constantly throughout the film it gives you nice twists and turns that you did not see coming before they're always adding characters that you thought was possibly dead or wasn't going to be involved anymore they really have created a great fast and furious universe and they really make it tangible and easy to follow and now we have an even better villain than before with Charlize Theron. She has a master plan, and if you get in her way, she has 10 contingency plans to back her up to make sure that she it stays on top. Another great thing about this movie is the action. Besides all the car racing that you're used to and the guns and missiles, the hand-to-hand -hand action is pretty top-notch and pretty entertaining. This is worth your money. I can honestly not... I've... I've enjoy majority of the Fast and Furious films. I love part one and part two. Part three was entertaining. Part four was quite better. And then part five and part six just got better and better and better. I did not like part seven for the most part, but part eight, Fate of the Furious, I can pretty much say easily that this is the best in the film franchise for me. I mean, this is just a great launch to summer movies, giving you a non-stop 
action field, explosions, gun, martial arts, hand-to-hand -hand fighting with over-the-top stunts that start from beginning to end going off into infinity. I am not over-exaggerating in any way. I loved all the characters that had stuff to do. I love the action with the hand-to-hand -hand fighting. I love the car racing on the ice and even on land. I love the plot. I love how it tied in with all the previous films from before. I liked how it even brought up more ideas that they can tell in the future to get you excited for that. There's no post end credit scene, so you don't have to wait there. I just love how they brought everything together and just made everything cohesive. And after eight films, was still was still able to give you something fresh that you have not seen before in this franchise. If Gary Gray crafted in the way, and all the directors, even with part five and part six, because those are my probably my favorite three. I mean, they're able to create all these stunts and choreograph it in the way that it just might happen in a perfect world. If everything goes right, it just might happen. And hey, you know, I just want to be entertained. I don't want all of my action films to be so serious all the time. And this wasn't, I mean, they have a freaking, they, I mean, the good guys are being chased by a submarine and they're flying torpedoes and the rock opens his door and is about, I don't want to spoil it for you, but he's, I mean, I'm like, come on now, one in a billion chance that all of this would succeed and they were able to do that in this movie and I enjoyed the hell out of it. If I had to rate Fast and Furious out of one out of 10 easily, give this a 9.5 out of 10 yes a 9.5 out of 10 because this is just great popcorn fun and you're gonna love it so guys have you seen fate of the furious do you want to see it have i turned you off have i turned you on do you agree with me or do you disagree with me let me know in the comment section below let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing if you like this video go ahead and give me the thumbs up and if you didn't like the video, that's fine. Just leave me a comment below why and still give me the thumbs up. Since you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you get all the content that I have to provide. Go check out my website, bookmark it, and look me up on social media. But guys, thank you again for tuning in for my review slash opinion on Fate of the Furious. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery. And that's just my opinion. Peace.